Hi, I'm Mike Garrett with AV Science. I'm here today with Chris Deutz with JBC. All the excitement on the forum today is about the new uh, release of the firmware update that JVC is going to be doing for their new projectors. And Chris, you want to give us a little information on this? Sure. Um, so, so we uh, we've been we've been uh, getting a lot of excitement uh, relating to the Frame Adapt HDR. JVC last year introduced the first solution for dynamic tone mapping on a 4K HDR home theater projector. And now we've announced that we're adding a feature called Theater Optimizer. Uh, this is part of Frame Adapt HDR. We're updating Frame Adapt HDR with this new feature. And it's got several, uh, what I'm going to call world's first. Would, would you agree, Mike? I agree very much so. I was very excited after reading some of the information on this new firmware update you're offering. Yeah, so so for starters, the customer or the installer is going to input the screen size, the screen gain, and the screen material. And then the projector is going to look at a bunch of other things. Are they running it in uh, HDR with low lamp or with high lamp? Uh, what aperture setting? Uh, what is the throw ratio? And, and you may wonder, how do they know the throw ratio? Well, we, we, we got the screen size and we can actually see where the zoom is set within the range uh, that the zoom can be. So we, 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 can, we can check that. And then uh, we're also gonna look at the color filter on like a RS2000 or 3000 is, is the color filter being used. And then, and this is also really cool, we're going to look at how many hours are on the lamp, okay? And so based on all of those factors, we're going to further refine our dynamic tone mapping for HDR to give the customer the absolute best results. And, and I think what this really does, this, this gives you a lot more uh, uh, flexibility when you're installing the projector and kind of fine tuning it to your exact theater. And also it's kind of just there in the background, you know, over time, particularly as your lamp gets older uh, and it's going to monitor and make those adjustments so you have the optimum HDR uh, for the longest possible time. Okay, that sounds really cool. A few questions I have here. As far sure. as when you enter in the, the screen size, I assume we're gonna do this off a 16 by nine screen size? Exactly. So those screens would use what, the width? Excuse me? So those people that have scope screens would use the width of their screen to convert it to 60 by nine? So um, the menu, keep in mind, this is all preliminary right now and uh, we're still finalizing a couple of things. Oh, but right now, as, as we see it, the menu is based on the 16 by nine screen. There's been some really good conversation today in terms of you know, what, what uh, uh, is, is the best recommendation for someone that has an ultra wide screen. Uh, either they're using lens memory or they're using the anamorphic mode. And we are asking the factory to give us some specific guidance we, we know that, you know, for example, just for lens memory, that as you change the zoom, that the projector is going to react to that. But we're asking the factory to give us some guidance as to the uh, correct uh, measurement to, to input if you have an ultra wide screen. So we'll have that for you. Okay. And you, as far as you can enter the material using a drop down menu, as far as what so material fabric you have? It's, it's the three digit code. Um, we have 168 uh, different screen codes, I believe. The, the screen codes actually isn't new, but we've now integrated it in uh, with, with this new feature. And so we have 168 screen codes, as far as I know, and you enter a three-digit numeric code that you get from our website. And, you know, so as an example, a Stuart Studio Tech 130 will be a different code than a Stuart Studio Tech 100 or a SI Slate 1.2 versus an SI Black Diamond 1.4, those would each be different codes. A common problem that I often run into with customers is the where it's changed from SDR to HDR and them getting that messed up. From my understanding, you've made some changes there also? Yeah, so this falls more in the category of, you know, getting feedback from uh, from other customers, from other reviewers, feedback specifically from the forums. 
um, and uh, creating a, uh, a, a content-based menu where we can tell what the uh, signal is uh, based on certain uh, characteristics like colorimetry um, or certain flags that are in the signal. As, as an example, we can tell uh, if it's REC 709 uh, that that would be an SDR signal uh, unless uh, it has the 3D flag. And if it has the 3D flag, well, then we know it's 3D. So based on that, we can, uh, we can uh, limit it down to the appropriate picture modes for that signal. That'd be very much appreciated because like I said, that's a, a regular occurring problem that I see and handle on a you know, pretty regular basis. Yeah, and, and there's another feature that's new that's kind of tied into that. Um, up till now, we've, we've kind of had two ways, we, we have automatic switching, but there's two ways it works. Uh, with SDR, it remembers the last signal you used, okay? And it always comes back to what did you use the last time. With HDR, we've got for HDR 10 and for hybrid log gamma, we have an HDR setting menu where you can lock in your uh, preferred picture mode for HDR10 and for hybrid log gamma. So um, we're improving that. We're, we're adding an SDR memory that you're gonna actually be able to lock in, uh, you know, whether it's natural or cinema or user one or, or maybe THX if, you're, if your model has that you'll be able to lock that in. And we've also added a 3D memory. Now you'll need to create a 3D preset, but that's actually pretty simple. Um, I think in the past we would do high lamps, 7,500 degrees Kelvin. Some people like, uh, even, even if they don't like clear motion drive on with regular movie content, they may like it with 3D. So you might turn that on. There might be one or two other things you tweak a little bit. And then you can save that in a user memory as your 3D setting. And then you've got the ability to uh, uh, lock that in on this new menu. And anytime there's a 3D signal, it's going to go to that preset. Yeah, I've heard a lot of guys in the, you know, 3D guys in the forum complain about that, having to manually select that. So they'll be pleased with that change right there. Yeah. Take. And so all the 2D guys that end up getting their settings messed up, that should solve that problem. Save me a few phone calls. Yeah. All right. So we got the oh, switch. Uh, you said on the lamp hours, do you have a question? Do you know if that, does that change anything for a high lamp and, and low lamp as far as look at the hours? That's, that's another good question. My, my initial gut reaction is it's probably just the counter, mm -hmm. um, but it's still a significant improvement over not having oh. that function at all. And, yeah. and I've seen the ideas to kind of, uh, keep track of high lamp versus low lamp. And I'm not sure if that's possible, but it's certainly interesting feedback. Uh, this update, in addition to having a lot of uh, cool things that we're implementing right now, it's, it's creating some good conversation, uh, which uh, who knows, could wind up, uh, you know, something uh, that we might be able to add down the road, who knows. A feature I would like to see added down the road down the road would be a lock on the settings, so that you know there is one for the uh, there is one for the lens. Mm -hmm. Yes, for, for the, the lens controls, there is a lock there, and if you uh, get into the ISF modes, those can be locked. Okay. It'd be nice. I, I I guess you're asking to have it for all modes, and the, and again. This is all good feedback, and I, I, I think you see through this firmware update that JVC is responsive, and JVC listens to this feedback, so it's all good to hear. Yeah, you can tell a lot of this stuff has come from, you know, people who have been asking for, for a while now, and JVC is listening, and, you know, really like what I'm seeing here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see if I have any other questions. There's something about where it's tying in with the UB9000. Have you got any more information on that yet? That, that is something I'm looking for some clarity on. Um, we, we continue to have the Panasonic uh, color profiles available. And um, there's something that's updated there, but that falls in the category of I'm still figuring it out. 
So I will get back to you when I know more. I do know there's a couple of uh, calibration related things. That's what I was getting ready to ask next about there was a note about the calibration software and some uh, changes there. Do you have anything on that yet? Yeah, so um, now, uh, as far as calibration software goes, I, I always defer to other, other experts, but I'm gonna give you some basics. Um, I'm gonna let you know that certain adjustments that used to be needed to, uh, you would have to run them for each picture mode, you'll now be able to do them globally. So you'll be able to make the, uh, you'll be able to uh, use the software and use your meter one time. I believe gamma is one example of this. You'll be able to uh, run the gamma adjustment and that'll apply globally. Um, again, please understand that I'm giving you some basic information and there will be additional information to follow on that. There's also, um, a, a second calibration adjustment, there's, there's been a request by people that are using some kind of an outboard CMS uh, yeah. that we offer. Uh, we offer high bright, which is as bright as the projector can go, no CMS. Um, and, 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 and that is without the color filter, but now we're gonna offer a no CMS uh, color profile where the color filter is engaged. And I know very specifically that that's something that a couple of the folks on the forum have been asking for. Yes, I know exactly who. So do I. Particular. All right, is there anything else you could tell us about that? I think that covers really most of my questions that I have. I, I think one of the biggest things uh, to point out is, you know, obviously people want the best dynamic range and people also want the most usable brightness. And I think that this theater optimizer in combination with the Frame Adapt HDR uh, is now taking that to the next level. And we have an engineer that's already looked at the preliminary firmware and that was one of his first uh, comments to me was that he uh, noticed uh, a nice improvement in usable brightness. And he also remarked that he uh, was seeing better black level. And, and I realize you, you don't always get the one and the other together. Getting one or the other, not getting both. Right, but, but so that, and, and, and obviously it depends how you're gonna kind of dial in your projector. Uh, we're, we're each like the chef in our own personal home theater. We've got our own recipe, you know. Uh, but you've got the ability to get a little more brightness if that's what you're looking for. And I think you also have the ability to get fine tune and improve the black level a little bit if that's what you happen to be looking for. And just to reiterate, this will be for the RS1000 NX5, RS2000 NX7, and RS3000 NX9. Exactly. Yes. Projectors. And mm -hmm. as far as uh, when you think this will be out? Mid-November, and again, this is gonna be free. And one of the things I think, again, people really seem to be responding positively to the fact that, you know what, Mike, I'm, I'm thinking the first customers that took delivery of these projectors, probably January of 2019. And today they found out that, you know, it's like I should be, I, I was telling someone else I should be putting on my Santa cap here. We're giving you an early Christmas present. We're gonna make that projector that you might have had since January of 2019, we're gonna make it better. Yeah. And for the folks that are going, you know, hey, I, I wanted to wait until Cedia and find out what was going on. Well, now you know. And uh, you can get what I would tell you is the best home theater projector for 4K that's on the market today. And you know that we're gonna make it even better later in the year. I agree with you. Excellent projectors. There you go. Anything else? Um, no, I'm, I'm looking forking. forward to getting the firmware and checking it out myself. I'll, uh, you know, maybe we'll need to do another one of these.